Good evening and welcome to the news of Al Shuruq TV. Today's stories include Sudan's Minister of Health has declared more than 200 cases of coronavirus. Al Burhan directs regular forces to confront any who tamper with homeland security. Ten people were killed and dozens wounded in clashes in Kassel Estate. Sudan's Federal Ministry of Health has declared 201 con new confirmed cases of coronavirus, which brings the total to 1,365, 70 of whom have died, 149 have recovered. 16 states have been affected by the coronavirus pandemic, however. Khartoum has recorded the highest number of cases with 1,149. The Jazeera state has 55 cases and North Kurdistan has 42 cases. Other states have confirmed cases lower than 10. Meanwhile, Sudan's Federal Ministry of Health has requested citizens to follow the prevention and instruction procedures. Dr. Suleiman Adam Idris, the head of the Supreme Con Coordination Committee for the Combat of Coronavirus and its prevention in the NDS, announced in a statement that a new case has been tested positive for coronavirus. The sample came from a person who was found dead in the Al Fashir clinic, bringing the record death toll in Darfur to two victims so far. The chairman of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Al-Burhan, issued a statement addressing the tribal clashes occurring in separate areas of the country over the past few days. He stressed that the citizens are required to adhere to the spirit of construction and brotherhood and to consider the danger facing the country with solidarity and unity. To keep away from war or tribal and regional aggressions, that will undoubtedly hinder the tasks of the transitional period and collide with the principles and slogans of the revolutions. About 10 people were killed and dozens were wounded in clashes in Kassel Estate between the Nuba and Bani Amir tribes. The number of victims of the clashes between the two parties rose to 10 and a dozen were injured. Al Burhan, the head of the Sovereign Council in the statement, said that he was concerned by the tribal violence in the country and directed the security forces to deter the attacks. Al Burhan further said that the Sovereign Council, the Council of Ministers, and the state agencies are following with great concerns the unfortunate tribal events that took place in separate areas of the country. The African Center for Human Rights, which is based in Sweden, condemned in a statement the incidents of tribal violence in the states of South Darfur and Kassala. The statement issued by the center's director, Dr. Abdel Nasser, has urged the government to act quickly and to resolve the situation. While praising the efforts of the rapid support forces in putting an end to the conflict between the tribes in South Darfur, the statement has called for the implementation of the same procedures in the state of Kassala, stressing that there are external and internal parties seeking to destabilize the country's security to achieve an agenda for weakening the regular forces, pointing to a recent remark of some leaders in the center on parties seeking to create conflict in order to implement plans of sedation in the center to undermine the transitional period. The Vice President of the Sovereign Council, Mohammed Himdan Dagalo, chaired at the Republican Palace the third meeting of the Higher Committee for Collection of Firearms and Unlicensed Vehicles. The meeting discussed a number of issues concerning collection of firearms and smuggling of vehicles inside the country where a number of decisions and procedures were taken into consideration to help the committee to perform its task properly. The technical coordinator and the official spokesman of the committee, Abdel Hadi Abdullah, said the committee decided on the allocation of joint forces to be stationed in the military headquarters of all the states in Sudan with the aim of collecting firearms. The South Sudanese mediation of the Sudanese peace talks 
announced the extension of the negotiation period until the completion of the files presented in the negotiations and the conclusion of the comprehensive peace agreement. In an official statement signed by the mediation team leader, Tat Dilwak, who is also the advisor to South Sudan's President for Security Affairs, said that the extension came upon request of two negotiation teams, adding the extension will give parties a chance to complete the negotiations and to show their willingness to reach a comprehensive peace agreement. The Sudan's liberation movement, led by Mr. Menni Arko, has proposed to reform the, res the restructure of the Sudanese Revolution Front and to cancel the decisional bodies at the leadership of the alliance. Several sources close to the matter said that the SLNMN filed a proposal to review the SRF's leadership structure. To cope with the political development in the country during the recent meeting held in Juba, where the groups are engaged in peace talks with the government. Minnawi is the SRF deputy but he has been criticizing the performance of the front from time to time, while the remaining factions of the alliance speak about the need to focus on achieving peace at the moment and they can deal with organizational issues later on. Minnawi has also called to reform the coalition of Sudan's armed groups. The member of the Sovereign Council, Mohammed al Faki Suleiman, has affirmed the Foreign Minister Councils and the forces of the Declaration of Freedom and Change support to the De-Empowerment Committee in response to a question about differences amongst components of the transitional government he stressed that the government works as one body and there are no differences amongst its components adding that there is of course a diversity of views but the government remains working in harmony for the success of the transitional period. Mr. al faqih stressed that the work of the Committee for the Deconstruction of the past administration has been hindered due to a lack of completion of the structure of the civil authorities, especially the Legislative Council and the appointment of civil governments, attributing this delay to the discussion with a number of parties. The Minister of Health and chairman of the National Council of Medicine and Poison issued a ministerial decree on Sunday, relieving Dr. Ahmad Osman from, the, from his post as General Secretary of the National Council of Medicines and Poisons. The decree appointed Dr. Menahil Abdel Halim as the Acting Secretary General until further notice. Reminding headlines. Sudan's Minister of Health has declared more than 200 cases of coronavirus. Al-Burhan directs regular forces to confront any who tamper with homeland security. Ten people were killed and dozens wounded in clashes in Kessel Estate. That was it from Al-Shuruq TV. See you next time.